Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, so thanks for sticking around to the very end. I really appreciate it. Um, so just a quick, uh, a quick sort of roundup of what I'm planning to do today. So I'm going to just introduce myself and then tell you guys a bit of a story and then share a few learnings and just things we've stumbled upon and learned along the way. <coughs> so just a quick little bit about me. So I head up the product team on, on Woo at Automatic, which basically involves WooCommerce primarily and a little bit of stuff with themes and a bit of interaction with Sensei, which is our sort of e-learning platform. So as you can probably hear, I'm from, I'm not from here, so I'm from Cape Town down in South Africa, so the southernmost tip of Africa. And yeah, so as most of you probably don't know me, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick uh, snapshot of a few things that I'm interested in. So it's my doggy and a few other things, a bit of Cape Town on the side there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically me in a nutshell. So on to the story, and that's the best way to start a story, I think. <laughs> so we'll, we'll kick it off. And, you know, a lot of people look at WooCommerce and they say, well, great, it's an e-commerce platform. Uh, people don't understand the journey that we've taken. And it really was, it was a long time ago. And like it says, in a galaxy far, far away down in the tip, at the tip of Africa, southernmost tip. So what happened there was three guys were working on WordPress themes at the time. This is about late 2007. And you've got AD, Mark, and Magnus, three people in three completely different countries on three different continents, all doing the same thing. And commenting and blogging and all of that was really popular at the time. I don't know how many people comment on blogs these days, but there's a lot more going on in the WordPress space than there was back then. So these guys were all blogging and they thought, let's uh, share, our, share what, we, what we think and what we feel. And um, They all just kind of discovered each other organically just through WordPress and through blogging. And all of a sudden that happened. So uh, you've, uh, you know, the WordPress space just exploded and uh, people thought, well, these themes are cool, so what can we do with themes? Can we do something more with it? And themes was kind of the only commodity at the time. So plugins were almost, almost a little bit unheard of. Um, I don't know if anyone heard the MyHacks file is being retired as of the next version. So that was kind of the way the plugins were handled back in the day. You'd kind of drop your code in this MyHacks file and it would just go on forever. And yeah, plugins weren't really a thing. So themes were really the main focus. And what these three guys were doing at the time was making designs that people weren't really doing on WordPress. So if anybody, who remembers the Lava Lamp JavaScript? Anyone? Lava Lamp, Barry on there. So that was basically, for anyone who doesn't remember that, that was a really interesting looking script that you hover over the navigation items and the sort of little bubble behind it would kind of magically shift over. Um, and it's not a surprise that people don't really remember it because it, it kind of dropped off really quickly. So what was going on now, basically these guys were doing things that people weren't doing at the time with WordPress and they thought, gosh, we, you know, we keep doing the same thing over and over again. Let's, let's try and do something more with this. Why am I repeating myself selling the same thing to clients over and over again as a custom project? So why not make it a product? So they decided to make a theme called Premium News Theme, which was the sort of original uh, Woo theme, if you will, the first Woo theme. And that was a product. So that was a WordPress theme, which was traditionally client-driven work being sold as a product. And that's how Woo themes came to be essentially. So late 2007, these guys thought, let's do this together. We're all doing the same thing anyway. You know, the one being a coder, one being a businessman, and the other one being a designer. Um, we all complement each other's skill sets really well. Let's work together. And it was called Premium News Theme for a while, and then eventually relaunched as Woo Themes. And that's where we sit today in terms of the theming. So fast forward a couple of years to, to September 2011. And as you can see, I've done a little bit of a color change there, a little quick costume change. And the reason for this is the biggest question we received, um, so just a quick snippet. So I, I, I joined Woo in November 2010. And at the time, the biggest question we got was, your themes are really great, but how can I sell things? What can I do with it? How can I add e-commerce functionality to my WordPress website? And people were using Magento, and people were using Foxycart, and all kinds of pre-made solutions. And we thought, we get this question so often. And you know what they say, you know, build, build what people ask for. And you know, the, first, the, first thing in, the first step in the lean startup process is talk to your customer, know your customer. And if your customer is telling you, this is what we want, you kind of need to go and explore that. So we spent a few months just exploring different options and what does this look like and what, what do we actually want to achieve with this. And the biggest constant across that whole process was hopefully we'll do this e-commerce thing and maybe we'll sell a few more themes. So we had very little knowledge of 
what was coming, you know, the plug-in ecosystem that we were building. Um, it was almost just looking at what we were currently doing and saying, well, this is great, this is working, how can we do more of what we're doing? And we stumbled through a few options and we discovered Jay and Mike who are sitting back there. Mike who spoke here earlier. And these guys were building an e-commerce plugin for WordPress. To my knowledge, I mean, Jay and Mike can correct me later if I'm, if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, the biggest reason for what was Jigoshop at the time was that e-commerce was really difficult and Magento was really, really difficult. <laughs> so rather do it with WordPress, take all the learnings and all the good stuff in Magento, put it into a WordPress-friendly box, and there you go. So we saw Jigoshop and we said, great, let's work with them. So we had a few discussions and Jay and Mike joined WooThemes to build what is now WooCommerce. Obviously the product has evolved far beyond our wildest dreams and that's where we sit. So just to recap, one engineer, one designer and one desire. This is basically the core of, of where WooCommerce started essentially. So we fast forward a little while and we end up with three guys full time, so the Kun who spoke earlier, Mark who spoke earlier, and Jay over there. And these guys took WooCommerce to 5 million downloads. Three guys working across the core product, across what was an, a vast array of extensions at the time, up to 5 million downloads, which is absolutely incredibly impressive in my opinion. And then we ended up with this. So 55 Woo Team Ninjas, that's all of us at a, I think it was about to go into a football game. Yeah. Um, and did I mention that we're hiring? So we're pretty much always on the hiring, which is really, really exciting. We, we can't seem to keep up with it. So take a note of that if you want to join us. We're really excited about what we're doing. Um, yeah, and that's 55 of us, including developers, support people, accounts team people, pre-sales, you know, sales staff, everybody. And you kind of end up with a bit of this, a bit of a you know, half costume change kind of thing. So we kind of have now two Whereas you know, WooThemes was themes, and we were hoping to do this e-commerce thing, maybe sell a few more themes, you kind of now end up with a business that has two very, very distinct uh, facets to it, one being themes and the one being e-commerce, um, themes and plugins, essentially. So we scale up. So we've got <laughs> four guys working this barrier over there. Um, so you, know, you scale your team and, and you grow. And, you bring in product managers, we've got Patrick here as well, and you know, your, your team just kind of grows from there. And just a few quick other stats while I'm on it. So these are as of the 4th of August. So we're approaching 10 million quite, quite rapidly. I think we might have even, I actually hope that we're surpassing 10 million as I'm talking because that would be really, really exciting. Um, and then a few other stats. So you know, WooCommerce, as we know, is an open source project and uh, it's all running on GitHub. And that's probably way more than that by now. Um, but it's active every day, so that number will change on a daily basis by at least one, because I know Claudia has to keep his commit streak going. Um, so yeah, so some really exciting stuff happened. And just to quickly recap, so 2007, three guys building themes. 2011, I think we were about nine or 10 of us at the time, building themes, hoping to sell a few more by building e-commerce functionality into a plugin because why would you build it into a theme, right? Um, you know, and the road has been absolutely incredible from there on. But you know what, and just when you think it gets really incredible, then this thing kind of happens, which is, is even, you know, even more exciting than all that. And uh, yeah, so that's just to anyone who doesn't know, that's uh, Hiro teaching Wapu how to be a ninja, which uh, is pretty cool. And we kind of refer to it as Wumatic, so well, just to kind of merge the stories. So uh, basically, to sum up a, a couple of screenshots in a, in a few words, so whoever, whoever doesn't know yet, uh, WooThemes was purchased by Automatic, and we're working together to grow what we're doing with WooCommerce and hopefully expand and, and just do as much of what we can and do more of it. Um, yeah, and the story from here on is as yet to be written. Uh, so that's just a bit of a story, just, so, just to kind of show off a little bit of, of what Wu has done over the past few years. And you know, the, the, biggest, the biggest sort of uh, thing that I find really interesting is the intentions behind everything. So we never, we never went out to say, let's build WooCommerce because we know that there's going to be this huge plugin ecosystem behind it and building a community and powering whatever, 29% of 
all e-commerce websites online, we built WooCommerce to sell more themes. And the rest kind of just happened organically, which kind of shows a clear need. But as I said earlier, there's, there's plenty that one learns along the way. So when you know what that intention is, you know that we clearly didn't know everything out of the gate. So we didn't know that we were building a very big ecosystem of different plugins. We didn't know that we were stepping into a system that already existed. You know, so companies like USPS, FedEx, UPS, <coughs> PostNL, et cetera, all exist already in, an, in a commerce space, but not necessarily in e-commerce. So all that, they don't exist as, as much in, they, they're more chiefly in a commerce sphere, right? So one of the first learnings to jump to that section of the talk is understand the markets that you're in. So we're not in just the WordPress market, we're in the WordPress market, we're in the e-commerce market, and in the commerce market, it's a basic, basic commerce. Right? And, and understanding this early on was something that we just we really had to jump on because people ask you questions and people need to know things. Um, a good example of, of understanding would be, um, you know, does my, can I, can I get a, a USPS label from my WooCommerce store? Well, you can, but only if there's an extension to allow you to do that, so functionality. And at the time, we needed to build all of that stuff because we didn't have an ecosystem, sorry, an ecosystem like we do now. So understand the markets that you're in is incredibly important. But that, that only kind of covers the, the WordPress side of things and the e-commerce side of things, so understanding what the needs are. But ignoring services like USPS and posting, postage and payments for a moment, what about things like table rate shipping, or taxes, or shipping classes and shipping zones, and you know, all of this functionality, how do you understand that? And this is, this is the, biggest, the biggest lucky draw that we made in the very beginning, which was basically pure luck, was hiring on passion and on understanding. So not just of WordPress, but of e-commerce. So if you ask me what table rate shipping is, I'll give you a very rudimentary example. You know, I can, I can kind of explain it to you, but if you want the real explanation, ask Mike, because Mike knows table rates and how it functions and what it's meant to do and you know, the actual e-commerce, the actual commerce construct behind it, as well as the WordPress side of it. So, you know, hire for both, not just somebody who can build WordPress plugins, but somebody who understands what they're building and why, right? Incredibly important. But speaking of all of these things, so talking of taxes and shipping rates and all of that, be aware of scale at all times on everything. So when you're dealing with people's money and their store and their business, this is incredibly important. If the server's going to fall over, they're not just losing blog posts or whatever, they're losing money. So definitely important to be aware of scale at all times from a from caching point of view, from just everything that the product is doing to even the simplest thing like uh, order volume. How many how many orders can the system hold? You know, well, how big is your server? Um, but the, so the system should be able to take care of it as, as large as the number of orders gets, the system should be able to take care of that. A really great use case for this, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know, is WooThemes.com is actually running WooCommerce, vanilla. We don't do anything fancy. It's not like we run our own pro version or anything like that. It's WooCommerce that you get out the box. And we process I believe we process a transaction every few seconds. So that's, that's quite a good testament, I would say. And we run on WP Engine. So anyone, anyone who's running on WP Engine and running WooCommerce is basically running what we are. So that's a really great uh, showcase. So quickly, a few other points. So in terms of sustainability and sort of growing what you've got, do it to help people and help other people help people, you know, because then you've got this exponential growth that happens. Like Kun was talking about with dependencies and the dependencies that have dependencies and the dependencies of the dependencies of the dependencies and so on. It's the same thing. If you go out to help people from the very beginning, so we help people sell things online. Okay, that's the simplest thing. WordPress.com helps people blog online, helps people have a voice, have a home on the internet. So help other people to help other people. And then they'll just keep helping other people and so on. And how we do this is we form key partnerships to help store owners to sell product and to help agencies to make it easier for, to sell stores to other to store owners, you know, to help 
you know, mom and pop shops or small enterprises to get online. So we form key partnerships such as with PayPal and Amazon and you know, payment companies and we've got a, an integration with PostNL, for example. We have a few ideal integrations as well. So you know, all of these are, are discussions that we've actively had to make it easier for people in markets to sell online, to manage your inventory, to manage your accounting, etc. But as I said earlier, I'm not from here. So I don't know how the ecosystem works in the Netherlands, for example. So learning about PostNL and learning about Ideal and learning about all these different pieces, it's all new to me, it's all foreign to me. So how do you do that? How do you get past that barrier is you develop an ecosystem of people. So, the com so you develop a system that works. So I've skipped ahead a little bit, I'll skip one quickly. So you develop a system which is based on people who have a broader understanding of that market and you give them what they need. So just to jump back to that previous slide, is you give the, the basic tools, you know, the groundwork and the, you know, ex essentially the shovel uh, to get things done, and then you allow the ecosystem to flourish. So there, there was already, for example, a PostNL integration by the time we started developing ours because somebody saw a need and they developed it and we gave them the tools to do that. Just a few quick points. So these are two businesses that have actually been built off of the back of WooCommerce. So they probably, I, I don't know if it's true or not, I hope it's true, but they probably wouldn't exist if not for WooCommerce. So these guys are building extensions with us and doing a lot of client work with WooCommerce as well and sharing their knowledge back, which is incredibly important. Just a few quick small slides that I'll quickly jump through. So just to recap on the, uh, on the contribution aspect of WooCommerce. So this is part of the ecosystem. It's not just about business building. It's not just about money. It's about sharing of knowledge and sharing experiences. And you know, people have come and said, well, I think that you should do this with your API. Or I think this feature needs to work like that. Or you know, in Germany, we have this regulation that needs us to do something with a coupon code or you know, whatever it is. And they all can contribute directly back to it. So we don't have to learn all the, we can focus on doing what we do, which is building the, black, the platform and everybody else can share their contributions back. So like I said earlier, that number's probably also gone up by now, the 373. So quickly, just to round off a few small things, how, we, how do you grow from here? So like I mentioned earlier, we, are prim we were a theming company, we're now an e-commerce company, and how do, you, how do you grow? So we built themes, which we built themes, and then we built e-commerce functionality, which complemented our themes. So now, how do you keep that going? You can't just sort of keep building new things because then you become defocused. So we went backwards and we said, okay, well, now we've got themes and we've got e-commerce, let's build a theme that works for e-commerce. So you get Storefront. And Storefront, like WooCommerce, is entirely free. It's modern, it's based on underscores. And you can see over there, it's really, really easy to customize using the WordPress customizer. And this was us taking us a look back in order to take a further step forward. So Storefront is our big focus theming-wise at the moment. And we're building child themes and extensions on top of Storefront to help people sell things online, really simply. So you can get Storefront, which then gives you a click to go into get WooCommerce. If you have WooCommerce, you can click and get Storefront. They all work together. It's always going to be up to date. There's no bugs that we know of. You know, it, it's, uh, it, it, does its, it does its thing. Um, and you know, this is just a quick, quick point on this. So if you don't, if you don't do if you don't do like a, a very clear separation, you end up with this. And you can see what's in the middle there is very murky because it's kind of a mixture of all three things and becomes very unfocused. You can't tell sort of what the focus, what the focal point is, right? So we, we try to go for this kind of a model where everything is independent. So you can see WooCommerce and Storefront are in completely independent products, <coughs> but they work together. And somewhere in the middle there is where the magic all happens, right? So they all kind of work together. And yeah, that's kind of the model that we, we choose to go for. You can see clearly sort of what the distribution is like, what the focal points are, but there's a clear overlap and they all work together, but they can all stand on their own, which is very important. Um, yeah, and then just one big thing in terms of building a business going forward, um, don't be afraid to piggyback. And it's something we did from the very beginning. We took the WordPress market and we said, people are using WordPress, we'll build on top of WordPress. Let's, uh, let's go with it. Instead of saying, we're building our own content management system now, um, you know, we took an audience that we knew and we helped, and WooCommerce did the same, essentially. So yeah, um, summary, listen, learn, iterate. That's, that's how you scale, basically. Is you listen to your customer, 
learn from what they have to say, and then just keep iterating on your product over and over again, and just keep looping through that cycle of three. And yeah, that's me. Thanks. Any questions? Anything at all? Yeah. Yep. When <coughs> uh, made a transition from uh, from just themes to e-commerce, was there like some sort of into management? Was there like a sense of loss, or did it just say, "Oh no, this is just actually just great. Let's just focus on the e-commerce thing and, and, and get on with it." So what? I, I mean, so, from the yeah. founders' perspective, okay. they started out as just a theme business, and I assume being three different people, they're all not their agendas, but mm. seeing differently. Yeah. When e-commerce started to come in the forefront, was there any sort of like gibbering about where to go next with Wu themes, or they was just all? Not really, no, because it was all we we never we've never looked at the business as two separate things. We've always seen. Woo themes and WooCommerce is one is one thing, and so WooCommerce is the product built by Woo themes, you know. So that's obviously that's a discussion that because it is confusing, you know, of what is the company name and what is the brand, etc. Or what is the, yeah, what is the product the product and the brand? Um, but no, there was we've always looked at it as one thing. Um, so the e-commerce was always there to help themes, and then the themes were always there to help with the e-commerce. So it's yeah, it's always kind of been meshed together, yeah. Everyone's very happy with the e-commerce stuff, of course. Yeah. Anyone else? Any dev questions? Any questions about the future? You want, well, want to try and eke any secrets out of me? What do you see as a bigger challenge for WooCommerce at the moment? Okay. So, uh, yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to pry because I, I like talking about the, the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Um, so the biggest problems are installation and setup. How do you get the code onto their server without a file permissions issue from their shared hosts FTP? Mm -hmm. um, and how do you get them set up? And you know, those are two things you can tackle in a variety of different ways, but that's two things we're actively trying to, to solve and, and trying to retroactively do that as well. Because we have, we have products that were released in 2012, you know, which are in, in IT talk that's decades. So trying to retroactively learn and, and do that kind of thing, like Mike did an amazing job earlier of talking about onboarding. And you know, that, that is the key to solving the setup problem, really, is, is making the product really simple. But then how do you solve installation? Um, you know, that's another thing we're, we're actively trying to work on. Um, I think it's actually something the WordPress community is trying to actively work on. Because how do you install a product that's not hosted on WordPress.org without having to use FTP anymore? It's incredibly difficult to do. Um, but something that some hosting providers are doing at the moment is the one-click install. So you'll end up with a, you know, the one-click WordPress install, and then they take that to the next level, and they say, well, here's Mojo Marketplace, and it's pre-installed for you. So you know, steps forward like that are something we're definitely keeping an eye on. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good focus for the future. Yeah. Can you want? No? Okay. Thank you very Thank much you. for sharing.